Hi everyone, here we are today at Rockbridge. We're in northern Hawking County, about one or two miles south of the Hawking and Fairfield County lines. Now, to give you a little bit of background about Rockbridge itself, um, the initial town name was Millville. Uh, and that was because the Hawking River lays right, actually, uh, right this direction from us. Uh, and kind of uh, is a natural barrier for the, the community uh, on the eastern side and north. Um, there's several mills that once were established uh, around the river in this general area and a small community sprang up from them, thus the name Millville. Uh, over time it changed to Rockbridge uh, because if we uh, go a little bit south here, a, a couple of miles uh, as the crow flies, uh, we'll come into the natural rock bridge uh, and is a state nature preserve now, but that's where the name of the community originates. Uh, and it, it was long been here prior to these train tracks right through here uh, coming through. And this was on the Columbus, Hawking Valley, and Toledo. Uh, and we've seen some information about that that I've written and uh, discussed over the previous months here, over the summer and spring. And this line was actually uh, built by them, uh, I believe around uh, circa 1870. The uh, Columbus, Hawking Valley, and Toledo dates back to 1868. And then, as we all know, uh, in 1899, it was uh, put into receivership, and then the name changed to the Hawking Valley Railway, which was then bought by the Chesapeake and Ohio uh, in 1930. Well, the reason I'm here today is it's pretty interesting. Um, little place. I wanted to come here and actually do a video instead of just taking pictures and kind of explaining it. I wanted to actually explain it on the ground and here um, because I have, uh, I was just amazed by what is here below our feet here, um, which I'll get to in just a moment. It just it astounded me when I discovered it uh, a couple weeks ago. So I wanted to come back, come back out here, do a video, walk you through it and sh show you what's going on. But in close proximity to the train tracks, uh, if you, we go just on the other side over here, across Dupler Road, where all of these trees are, as you can see, all the way down through here, all on that far side of the tracks, that was at one time the Hawking Canal. The Hawking Canal was built in uh, around 1839-1840 through here, and was closed in 1890, 1894, I do believe, uh, but, but by the 1890s, or by the beginning of 1890. Uh, and even prior to, even after the Civil War, there's really no need for the, the canal. It really struggled for several decades at, before it did close, uh, all because of these train tracks right here, um, which made getting goods and products and people traveling uh, made it much easier and quicker uh, than using the water. But where we're standing right here, I'm going to step out of the way and begin to show you where we're at. This as I said, I discovered a couple of weeks ago, and I found it very interesting. And I'm going to walk you through how I kind of concluded what this is. Uh, this is actually, we're standing on the platform and very next, or very near over in here to the Hawking Valley Railway Depot here at Rockbridge. It was built in 1901 and closed around December 1st of 1937 and as I said the way I kind of came to that conclusion is if we look down here we can see brick laying about and we can actually see a perfect kind of cutoff here and as what we are standing on here right now is the platform this would have extended a long way out here another probably 50 feet and if we swing back this way another 30 to 50 feet back over here as well and this would have been the place where passengers and engineers and conductors would have gotten off the train stepped into the, to the station or into the depot rather and conducted business uh, bought tickets or waited for a connecting train that they needed uh, something to that effect but this is for sure the platform and the, the remains of it and that's how we can tell this if I can jump down in here without shaking you who are is in the camera right now too too terribly we can actually see Nelsonville block right here Nelsonville block Nelsonville block 
all through here and we can see the foundation these heavier sandstone blocks right here which may or may not uh really impossible to tell uh could have been remains these right here could have been remains from the hawking canal itself which as i said closed in 1894 or so and this was built in 1901 so and quite very close proximity to the canal um very very close within only near yards away uh, so it makes good sense that this would have been very practical to use and very probable. So very fascinating. Just absolutely astounding that it's here. I'm sure people know about this place, I would imagine. Uh, people here in town, here locally. But as my, to my knowledge, there is really no one uh, historically or anybody that has really documented this place uh, to show that it's here. To show that there are remains here, that there is evidence of it. Um, because we know that the Hawking Valley purchased brick from uh, plants in Nelsonville and used them to build and build their platforms. Uh, we've seen this at Murray City. Uh, we've seen it at Canal Winchester and uh, other places. So this is um, kind of a dead giveaway, as it were, that this place is for sure um, the Rockbridge Depot. Um, now, there wasn't... This wasn't really anything uh, historically significant that happened here. Um, you know, we're not we're not talking about you know a place that was you know a, a grand depot, a massive complex and structure. Um, you know, there was no coal mining that happened here or iron production. You know, it wasn't hauling uh, or, or brick for that matter. We we weren't seeing uh, heavy loads of uh, products and goods being loaded right here, but these tracks that's right behind us here, these tracks are the reason that this depot was here because we needed, or it was needed um, to kind of be a, a junction or a, a um, uh, I guess the proper word would be kind of just a stopping point for uh, all of the coal and brick and iron um, manufacturing that was going on in the south. So in a way, it, this is equally as important because these tracks, uh, which would have been double tracks along here, would have been two tracks uh, to uh, deal with all of the heavy uh, traffic that this area would have seen coming from the south going to Columbus and up eventually to Lake Erie and Toledo uh, and other points as we've seen from Chicago or to the east coast. Uh, but this is important because so many places or this is one place where so many pieces and parts and things were seen, even coming from Columbus itself, coming up the tracks from, from this way, from the north, going south, we would have had uh, coal mining equipment. We would have had people coming in, investors coming down to check on their um, companies and, and see how things are, are, are progressing. So the history here is in the surrounding landscape and the surrounding region, not so much here itself. Um, but it's still, this, this place is still an incredible, uh, landmark and incredible place to visit and to come to and to, to respect because, as I said, this place has so much history and is so old and has been absorbed by the landscape, absorbed by vegetation, but yet it's still here for us to appreciate and admire and to understand and to to really kind of use as a tool to, to really understand too how the Hawking Valley um, is the impact that that company, even though it only existed for about 30 years, and really we, we can go back and say for about 60 years, if we go back to about 18, you know, the 1868, 1870, when the line uh, began to be built and open, uh, how much impact it had on the Hawking Valley region, on southeastern Ohio and Appalachia, Ohio as a whole. So I hope you found this interesting. Um, hopefully this place, um, because I am putting it out there on the internet, hopefully nobody will come here, uh, damage this place. Um, if, if you do want to come here and visit, it is right near the uh, crossing here of Buckeye Troxel Road and, uh, and Dupler Road, right across the Hawking River. But if you do come here and observe this, please be careful of the train tracks. There's not a lot of traffic on the tracks, but at the same time, you, you never want to be um messing around train tracks uh, obviously and obviously the road as well uh, which is quite busy because of the hawking valley canoe livery uses this road so um do be careful um watch out for snakes and other 
uh, things uh, during the uh, hotter months uh, because there are a lot of brick, there is a lot of rock here, so it's not uh, that safe of a place, but it is very uh, important and very vital to acknowledge that it's here and to hopefully even protect it uh, to some degree. So, as I said, I hope you found this interesting, um, and uh, hopefully this kind of gives us a little bit more of a glimpse into the Hawking Valley and uh, the imprints it left on the landscape.